everybody, and welcome back to my channel. So nice to have you back. I've missed you. It's been a week, but it's felt like a month for me. This week's episode, I'm going to be continuing on this kind of unofficial sequence and series of videos that I don't really plan out to be a series of videos, but it kind of has happened that way. I'm okay with that. I hope you are too, because I think there is a lot of learning, a lot of unexpected learning to kind of uncover from this very simple example of a login form. Uh, I knew it was a good example when I started on it, but I didn't realize how good of an example it was. And there's this video that is going to become a result of just us making this component. This week's episode is all about Immer, spelled I-M-M-E-R. It is a awesome little low-level utility library that lets you create an immutable copy of an object via a mutable API. So. What that means, I'm going to show you when we actually get into the code, but when you pair Immer with Use Reducer, it makes for very easy to write and read reducer functions. When your state tree gets very complex, I would definitely encourage you to reach to Immer as a way to reduce that complexity. The caveat there is don't go to Immer by default. You don't really need it for all use cases. Uh, it's, it's there if you need it. It's a, it's a good thing to know that exists so that if you actually find yourself in need of it, you know that you actually have this tool in your toolbox that you can kind of pull out and then use to make your day-to-day -day life easier. So this video is gonna be us continuing on the previous videos with Use Reducer and moving all of our manual, uh, deeply nested copies of our object and moving all that functionality from us doing it ourselves using uh, the structuring, uh, and moving to Immer instead, such that it can handle all these deeply nested objects. Uh, let me show you the code, because I think it's gonna be a lot easier to understand rather than me just kind of just talk and explain it to you. Okay, so we're back where we started. This is the final result from the previous video. If you haven't already watched that video, please do watch it. I think it was a good video. People seem to like it. I think you will like it too. So I definitely encourage you to just click back uh, two videos from now or whatever many videos it is to see uh, the video why I love use reducer to see how this file came to be. Uh, just to jog your memory, we have our basic on submit handler, which is using the dispatch from the use reducer hook and we're using login reducer here. And what I'm going to be focusing on for most of this video is just inside of login reducer. So, you know, everything's working here. I can type things in, I can log in, show an error, everything like that is sweet. And the log reducer is where we're actually doing all the actual state manipulations, where we're actually changing from one state to the next state. Now, as it is right now, to be quite honest with you, I don't know if I would necessarily use Immer in this example because the state object is pretty shallow and it's not that hard to manage ourselves. But for educational purposes, I'm going to show you what it would look like with Immer. And if you have a more complex state object, then you might see the reason why Immer makes your life that much better. I've already installed Immer, so I'm actually going to uh, import Immer from the top here. A little bit of curiosity of Immer is that uh, by convention, you call it produce instead of Immer. Uh, Immer is the library, but it gives you a produce function, which you'll see how it's used here. And for the first example, I'm gonna update the field action type. And that's the uh, action that lets me actually put in data in here. So instead of me having to return a new object, because the reason why you also have to return a new object from a reducer is if it's the same instance, the React component won't update because it does a shallow, it does a uh, check if the object is the same instance. If it's the same instance, then it says nothing has changed, which is why you actually have to create a new object here where I'm also destructuring the existing state onto that new object, essentially copying over the old state into the new state and then overriding it with a new value that I want. And this isn't that bad if you're used to it, you have practice with it, but it's definitely error prone, especially as things get more deeply nested. For now, I'm gonna move this to using Immer. So I'm gonna say return produce. There's two ways to use produce. So I'm gonna show you the first way right now, the more standard way. The first argument you put in is the uh, object that you want to mutate. So in this case, I want it to be state. The second argument gets a is a function, and what that function is given is by convention in the Immer library called a draft object. This draft object is a copy of my input state object, 
And it's called a giraffe because this is kind of, this is the object that you can then do all your mutations on that Imo will know then how to produce an immutable copy of. So what does that mean? So if I actually like create this function here, what I can do instead is I can say draft action field name equals action dot payload. I can go here, just comment that out because I don't need that anymore and save this file, refreshes, and everything is still working as expected. And underneath the hood, Immer does something very clever. It does this thing called uh, copy on write. Uh, this is an implementation detail, but I always find it very interesting to know how these things work. When you actually assign new properties and datas and, and manipulate the data on the draft object, under the hood, Immer is tracking all the mutations that you're doing. And when this function returns, it will keep will go through all those mutations that you've done and then immutably reassign them to the input object to create a new immutable copy. So in this case, this is all I have to do. This is this is just working now. So let's actually go to the next one as well. Let's go to login. Uh, we're gonna say return produce state as uh, draft. And here all we have to say is error. Oops. Draft error is an empty state, and draft is loading equals true. So now when I log in, I should see that is loading. Everything there is still working as expected. Now, this is fine. I can add produce to each one of these individual functions, but that there has to be a better way. And luckily for you and I, there is because Ember provides a different way that you can actually use its powers. As I mentioned before, there is a second way to use Ember, and that one is the curried method. So what I can do instead is take this login reducer, go down here, and say uh, uh, curried login reducer. I'm just going to say produce equals here. So now that I have the curried login producer, and I'm using it down here, what I can do is then update how I'm actually handling things inside of my use reducer function. Because now when you create this curried function, what this is essentially doing is it's partially applying the Immer functionality. So essentially what happens when you use produce as a curried function is under the hood, it kind of looks like this. So you have my fake version of what's actually happening where you have uh, but what produce returns is a function that looks like state and additional arguments. And then it returns produce, which we used before. It passes in that first state, which you saw the API before. And then in here we have the draft object. And then in here it calls in log and reducer. And it passes in that first argument from above and the any additional arguments. That's essentially what's happening. It's kind of automating all this functionality under the hood and letting us use this create login producer just as we would, just as this, the API for create login reducer is the same as login producer, except all that functionality is being wrapped in produce. So it should just work as is. So when it's being used here, this is being called with state and action, which means I actually have to change how my login reducer behaves because now it's behaving under the context of Immer. So this is no longer necessary. So all that I can need to do here now, uh, state is actually draft in this case. I can call it there uh, draft just to make things a little bit uh, less confusing. And what I can actually do here is say draft, uh, what is it, action.fieldName equals action.payload. Then I can just return early. So now I actually have to, uh, when you return a value from Immer, it will replace, if you return the draft object, then it'll just do what you expect it to do, uh, but it's not necessary because Immer just tracks the mutations on the object itself. So you don't actually need to return anything from that function. So if I save this, of course I'm gonna get some fun little ESLint rules. Let me just say state equals blah, just to get it to be quiet. But now I can actually update things correctly. It's, it's working. So if I keep going here, I can actually say uh, draft error equals empty string error uh, draft is loading equals true. And I can just delete this. So now if I log in, 
things are still working. So let me actually just go through real quick and just update all the other things. Uh, I'm just gonna do some little foo, say draft dot, I'm gonna say this, and then these are gonna be like this. Let me turn that, oops, up there. Error, uh, let's do the same little fun little foo. And is logged in. It's gonna be false. Default is just return, and I don't need state anymore. So after all of that, everything should work as expected. So now if I log in with my actual uh, login credentials, which is Harry password, things are working. They are working just as before. Uh, log out. I actually want to clear things as well with blog it when I do a success. So now I do Harry password. Cool. Uh, this is already much more readable in my opinion. Uh, it may be a little bit of overkill here. Also having this not be, you know, having it kind of be indirect down here makes it a little bit confusing, but uh, I can very clearly just pretend that I'm doing a, mu a, a, a mutation of an object when I'm actually producing a new immutable copy. But wait, there's more. Uh, the Immer project, or now it's a GitHub organization, also includes a fun little uh, separate library just called Use Immer, which is unsurprisingly hooks written just for Immer. So Use Immer. And what I can update in here is uh, Use Immer Reducer. And what I can do with this. Rather than worry about produce and making the create function here, so I can actually just switch this login reducer, login reducer to this, and that's it. I just think about that, that's it. It's it use M reducer is doing that for me underneath the hood. I don't have to do the create function at all, it has a little bit of small optimization to get the hood, but. This is all I need to do if I actually want to use a reducer that uses them underneath the hood. I have that API set up here. I so log in with myself again, Harry password. Everything is looking real good. That is using Immer with use reducer. That was a basic example of how Immer can make it more clear what state you're changing in your use reducer reducer functions. If you have a very complex state tree or you want to use some parent component that has use reducer and pass down dispatch and state to all children, using Immer at the top will guarantee that any deeply nested mutation will always make an immutable copy in, a much, in the most discrete manner with an easy to use API. You have to be aware when you are using Immer because if you don't, you can definitely use it in the wrong way, which might cause you a little bit confused when things behave a little bit differently, but as long as you are aware that you're using Immer, it should definitely make your components stronger and more resilient to errors. By that I mean returning a, the same instance of the state object. Hopefully you found that good to know. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you have used Immer in the past, if you think you're not gonna use it in the future with React and Hooks. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments or on Twitter. If you're not already a subscriber, do become a subscriber because these videos come at you all the time. And if you do want to support uh, my work on these videos, I would love if you became a Patreon patron and help me make these videos for you as I do already. That's this week's video. I look forward to you again in next week's video. And I will say hello again when we meet again next week. But for now, I say goodbye because this is the end of this week's week's video. Bye.